Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. I hope you are all well. In this video, I am concluding the review for the 432 Evo standard version reference music server, which if you have just joined us, is a computer-based hi-fi music server and streamer, which really is designed to maximize your Rune music streaming and use user musical experience. The server also has internal storage and an internal CD ripper to store and rip all your favorite CDs. The standard server from 432 Evo is their entry level product from their entire range. In the UK it costs £2,500, but if you're in the UK you automatically get HW Boost or Hardware Boost, which is a better processor, more RAM and an internal 2 terabyte SSD for your storage. Now if you have just joined us, this is the third video in really a comprehensive review video series. And I've created an introduction video where I talk about the server and I talk about 432 Evo as a company. And obviously I'll link it up there for you for you to go and watch that. And if you like sound demonstrations as part of reviews, I've created a specific sound demonstration video for the 432 server. And I actually decided to demonstrate one of its USPs, its unique selling points. It's 432 Hertz mode. One of the main reasons for buying a music server such as this 432 Evo as opposed to trying to build one yourself is definitely for the simplicity of it, the ease of use and the reliability. And I can gladly and happily report that the 432 Evo server has been 100% reliable throughout the whole review period. And that's not always the case with networked based hi-fi components. And the installation of the 432 Evo is very easy and very simple. Firstly, you connect to the server from your router using a LAN or a network cable. That's right, there's no Wi-Fi here with the 432 Evo server, which could be a deal breaker for some audio files. But for me, I actually think it's a positive. I see it as a good thing because I know from experience, you don't really want Wi-Fi in a product like this. So I'm happy to not see it in this situation because to me, it means that 432 Evo are choosing quality over convenience. And the second connection you'll need to make is from your DAC or maybe from some kind of USB to SP diff converter going USB and connecting into the server. And the last connection is power, <laughs> obviously an important one, and that comes in the form of an S Booster linear power supply. And I'm really happy and glad to see 432 Evo including a linear power supply with their entry level server. And it's great to see them use a linear power supply from a very reputable linear power supply manufacturer. And what I will say is the S Booster linear power supply was absolutely perfect throughout the whole review period. So that is it. Those are the only three connections you'll need to make and then you're almost ready to go. And that is because the 432 Evo server has quite a few different options and configuration setup things to look at. Some of them are quite critical. Now the main controls are easy to navigate using a series of main tabs down the left hand side. And the server comes mostly configured, ready to play, as I mentioned, with just a couple of key options or things for you to select. Clicking system configuration gives you the two main methods of using the 432 server, either using Rune or using Logitech. Now selecting one or the other will change the configuration of the server, which takes about 10 seconds. Now using the server in Logitech mode means that you can control it as a server with one of the Logitech enabled apps such as iPeng or SqueezePad on Apple or something like Squeezer on Android. You can use the 432 Evo server like this, but really this is there as 
really a backup option for using the server. 432 Evo, really see their main user base using this server through Rune. The 432 Evo server will run as a Rune core and a Rune endpoint, which means it's a fully encompassing you know, full system to use Rune straight out of the box without needing to buy anything else. And there's been some special programming attentions to detail paid to kind of maximize the Rune user experience and to get better or the best sound quality from Rune. Now I found the Rune user experience to be fast, for it to be reliable, it worked great, even going between music that's been stored on the server and then off to stream files from Tidal and then off to stream files from Cobuzz, even in the same queue or playlist. And overall, the usability of Rune with the 432 Evo as a core and an endpoint was excellent. I have absolutely no complaints with the speed or how it operated in kind of everyday use. And the fact that the 432 Evo is a Rune core means that you can add other Rune endpoints in other rooms of your home to very easily kind of extend your music listening experience and to give you a very easy to use multi-room home audio system. To rip a CD, all you need to do is insert a CD into that slot loading mechanism, let the server do its thing, and it will eject the CD once that CD has been ripped. And as part of that process, it will go away and fetch and catalog all the correct metadata that you'll need, which I think is very cool. And the CD ripping process uses a system called CD Paranoia to ensure that the CDs are ripped to a high quality. And the CD ripping drive is a TIAC drive that 432 Evo have chosen because of its build quality and its reliability. Now, when you look at the different options that you've got to change how this 432 Evo music server sounds, initially these options can be quite confusing. So I thought I'd just quickly explain how to use them all and what they all mean. <laughs> Starting with the DAC output resolution, selecting that to be disabled is the same as what you might more easily refer to as being native. So what comes in will be the same as what goes out. But with this option, you can choose to have the server upsample your music all the way up to 32 bit and 768 kilohertz if you want to. Then it's suggested to leave the rest of the settings are ultra high and one times precision. But then we move down and we have 10 different SQI or sound quality filter modes to choose from. Now these are independently selectable from the upsampling. So again, that gives you a lot of different options and ways and means to try and tailor the sound to your preference. And then we have the interesting part, I think, for this 432 Evo server. Now, there are two settings that, to pay attention to. One is the bass frequency. Now, you want to leave the bass frequency at 440 hertz, but then you have the interesting option, which is the target frequency. And that is where you can choose to have the 432 Evo proprietary plugin enabled. Now there are quite a few different options there, but really it's the 432 Hertz option, which is the interesting one. Now before I talk to you about the sound quality of the 432 Evo standard server, I want to talk to you about that 432 Hertz sound mode. Now I went into some detail about what this is all about in the introduction video that I created, or if you want a deep dive, then I suggest going on the 432 Evo website and reading through the section on there about 432 Hertz tuning. But to break it down into, into its kind of real, real simplistic terms, the 432 Evo server will in real time really change the tune enough the music that you're listening to, kind of akin to how a musician would tune their instrument to 432 hertz instead of 440 hertz for a more relaxed, more natural, more organic sound. Now I think interestingly, this whole concept, you know, pitch it to some musicians and they will immediately agree and think it's a great idea, but pitch that same theory to audiophiles and I think, it's the type of 
thing that would make certain audio files guards go up and you know they would think yeah, why are we messing around with the original files and surely this is just some sort of gimmick or some sort of trickery well i think the interesting kind of outcome from that is in the video that i created to demonstrate this sound mode you know I compared or played you know, the music server playing in 440 hertz mode and in 432 hertz mode. And I asked people to give their preferences in a poll. And when we look at the results of that poll, we can clearly see that double the amount of audio files preferred the server in 432 hertz mode to 440 hertz mode. Now, I can fully appreciate my YouTube video doesn't categorically prove anything, but I think it definitely demonstrates that there is something in this 432 hertz sound mode. I actually preferred the sound of the server in 432 hertz sound mode as well. And I think what's important about that is, is that if you're comparing or considering buying a server around this price point, I keep saying it, this sound mode could be one thing that makes this server stand out to you as opposed to its competitors' products. And I think it also really proves that all music servers don't sound the same. They all have really their own sound, just like hi-fi components do. So you shouldn't buy one on specification alone. You should try and demo them and listen to them. And hopefully this video will help you to be able to quickly access the settings of a 432 Evo server if you have a home or a, a hi-fi dealer demo of it so that you can do that test for yourself. Listen to 440, listen to 432 and decide if you think the 432 is for you. Because I keep saying it, that could be the reason why you buy this server over the, its competitors. <laughs>initially I did quite a bit of testing between you know 432 hertz and 440 hertz and then I started to you know listen through the different sound quality filters the SQI modes with 432 on and then 440 hertz on so quite a little bit of messing around and testing but very quickly I settled on 432 hertz mode and the SQI filter called Archimago Imp Plus Evo Two. For me, with the review system that I used for the review of the 432 Evo server, that just had the best of pretty much everything, the best sound presentation overall. And I started the review using Arcam's brand new SA30 integrated amplifier, which has its own internal DAC. And I was feeding from the music server to Chord Electronics Hugo M Scaler, which acted as a very high quality USB to SP diff converter. Now I started listening to the music but pretty quickly worked out that I felt that the server could probably deliver more than I was getting from the RCAM. So I changed the system to the Chord Electronics Hugo TT2 as a DAC and preamplifier and then changed the power amplifier to be the T Toby. With this new combination of products I felt like I heard much more of what the 432 Evo can deliver from a sonic quality point of view and one of the first things you'll notice going from maybe a more budget type of music streamer up to a product of this kind of level and this kind of quality is just how solid and how big everything starts to sound and I would say that's one of the key strengths of this 432 Evo server is everything has nice solidity to it so you have a nice solid and impactful amount of bass you have a nice solid and and mostly clean mid-range there is a good you know, solid and engaging to listen to soundstage and there is, you know, good overall clarity and good solid timing. And all of those sound quality characteristics I think are all good and very praiseworthy for a music server around this price point. And then you add in that 432 hertz sound mode and that just helps to relax and ease off the presentation from this server and just to make it a more easygoing thing to listen to. I think being ultra critical with the server, there is still some tension in the sound with some music and I think the timing could be better, but then we're starting to move into really the expectations of products costing quite a bit more than what this server does. And again, back to the price point, I think it offers 
very good sound quality for its price point. And attached to that, I think is one very cool thing. Every 432 Evo server, with the exception of one, can be sent back to base and upgraded up the 432 Evo food chain. Speaking from 10 years or more of experience of working and building and customizing and getting better sound quality from computer-based music servers, as you move up the 432 Evo food chain, you start to see dedicated products being used for USB outputs and more linear power supplies being used. And again, speaking from experience, I know that all of those things are really, really key and critical for elevating the sound quality that can be achieved from a product like this. I think it's great to see the option to be able to upgrade your existing products rather than having to, you know, discard and buy new. Because when you upgrade an existing product, you're always keeping or benefiting from your initial and your continual investments in the product. You never ever lose money on a product. So I think that's very, very cool. And you know, upgrading of computer-based music servers is one of the greatest things about going the DIY route. And it's nice to see some of that being put back into this type of product purchase platform. <laughs> So overall, and really my final thoughts, I think the 432 Evo standard server is a very nice product that offers very good sound quality for the money. I really like how it works. It works absolutely great, totally reliable. In the UK, you get fantastic you know, support and customer service from the UK distributor, which is you know, a lovely bonus thing for UK customers. And I think this 432 Evo standard server definitely offers what its competitors offer, but it also offers more. It offers that 432 hertz sound mode, among other sound tailoring options, and it offers upgrade ability, which I think both are very cool. And I think putting all that together and kind of rolling it up into one package for the price point, I think this 432 Evo standard music server is going to offer what a lot of audio files are looking for around this type of price point and potentially more. And because of that, I'm very happy to award it our Essential Audition Award because I think you should make an effort if you're looking for a music server and streamer around this price point to have a demo of this server because it's got a very good chance of winning you over. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and really this three part review video series. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you haven't already. And yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you soon.